Oh man, it's time. I'm ready, dude. It's gonna be Slayer. They're gonna put him in the game and he's gonna be sick. Let's fucking go. Come on, let's see it. Uh... Chip, buddy, listen, alright, I just want to talk to you. Look, dude, come on. You can get down from there now. Come on. I just want to talk to- Ah, oh, fuck you. Hey, everybody. Let's talk about Jacko. Strive's character roster, while small, is pretty diverse, meaning that you're likely going to find a character that fits your niche and playstyle. We got the Ongabungas, the Grabby Boy, and the just fucking boring bastards. But there was one character type that Strive didn't really have. And that's what I like to call the Lab Monster's Pet. The Lab Monster's Pet is a character with seemingly endless possibilities and endless things to optimize and experiment with. Their kit allows for a kind of freedom that leads to infinite possibilities. While Zado was initially seen as this character for most people, compared to his XR and Plus R incarnation, there was much less to play with, generally forcing Zado players to focus on block strings and high-low throw mix. Don't get me wrong, Zado is still complicated, but the Lab Monsters didn't quite get what they wanted until she showed up. <laughs> Jacko is a character who originally came from Exard. In that game, she was placed down a little houses where her buddies would come out and beat the crap out of you. But for some reason, while transitioning over to Strive, something strange happened. Minions. Pumpkins. The best crouching animation. These were the ingredients chosen to create Jacko. But Daisuke accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Skill. Thus, Strive Jacko was born and caused every girl on Twitter to break their spines trying to do this goddamn animation. This does mean she has the best teabag in the whole game, though. Whoa, look at her go! Jacko has changed a lot from Exile to Strive, and a lot of people have said that they can't be bothered learning her due to how many things they have to do. But don't worry. As the best Giovanna player in the entirety of the extended multiverse, I know how hard it is to play a complicated character. Like, come on, she can't be that hard to play. Right? Fuck! No, come on! Just let me put him Just let me put him down! Oh no, I'm fucking dead again! No! <laughs> okay, after further examination. She's hard, bro, but it's fine because I'm here to walk you through how to play this character so you don't end up like this loser. <laughs> That's not me, by the way. That's someone else. Just ignore the... the can, we, can we cut the clip? Why are we, like, lingering on the clip for so long and just cut the clip? Cut the clip! To begin with, we need to talk about what Jacko can do and work from there. Her normals are nothing remarkable, with the only really interesting thing being that she has a jump D that is a projectile. Jacko's 236k has you kicking your enemies where the sun don't shine. It causes a mini wall bounce effect from the corner and you can use it in the air to confirm off of jump K. But you didn't come here for Jacko, CBT. I hope. You came here for the real shit. You came for the greatest move ever created in any video game. For those of you who don't know, brace yourselves. Because what I'm about to show you is the greatest thing ever conceived in a fighting game. Its mere existence caused the earth to nearly split in two due to the national phenomena it caused. Upon seeing it for the first time, there is a large chance that you will contract a big madness, which scientists have described as not good. Are you ready? Are you sure? There's no going back after this. You've got to be ready. Are you sure that you're ready? Are you really sure? Are you really sure? Is a boy. This little dude right here is known as a boy, which stands for boy. Ooh -ee. By using 236P, Jacko is able to summon a boy. If you hold the button, she carries it around, and if you let go, she instantly drops at her feet. While carrying the boy, she is able to throw them or drop them at her feet, as well as use her commands, which we'll get onto later. My dearest child. You are the love of my life. I shall cherish you and treat you like the little baby that you are. I am your mother, and shall raise you to be the best boy you can be. There is nothing I would do in this world to harm you, my sweet, precious baby boy. Oh god, what is it doing? That thing's getting closer. Quick, boy, keep it away! While the boy is active, you're able to do a variety of things, the main ones being 
punting. Any hitbox you put out causes the boy to fly in a given direction, with moves like 236k and 5d giving you very advantageous angles. But what's the point? Why not just make the boy a projectile at that point? If you said that, congratulations, you're a fool and you're going to the Shadow Realm. Good job, fucker. That's because you can do 236p again and get another boy! Holy shit, it's two boys! It's the boy! They can bounce off each other, look at that! They sandwich their opponent between them, look how cute they are! Fucking get them, boys! Anyway, you have four commands that you can give the boys at any given time that they're out. 214k is an attack command. They swing their sword to knock up the enemy when they hit them. 214s is a defend command. They cause any enemy that hits them to stagger. 214p is a return command. They recall all boys and add to your minion gauge at the bottom. The last command is a 214s, where you cause the boys to self-destruct after 3 seconds. Every action you get a boy to do costs a bar of the boy gauge. You're generally going to be using the first two, as the explosions are really small, meaning that they're hard to use in combos, and just recalling the boys doesn't really help you while you're on the offensive. Boys only last a short amount of time, but with every command you give them, and every time you hit them, they stay a little bit longer. There's several positions you can put the boys in, and by several, I mean more than I can actually talk about, but... Let's go over some of the basic ones. The marching parade. The social distancing. The man, I wish I was playing Hisui from Melody Blood right now. The she's just so cute, like she's a maid and she throws shit. She's literally the perfect character. The you're goddamn right, I'm gonna play Melly when it comes out, I'm gonna make a video on it. The fuck you. Truly, I have never lost with any of these formations. As you can see from this clip, my enemy is a second rate player with a third rate character, and my boy will destroy him with e fuck. Fuck you, Nago! You're a third-rate player with a fourth-rate character! Taste the power of my boy! Ha! So, your boys are kinda cowards. If they get hit, they disappear, or if you block a move, they all realize they left the oven on a dip. This means it's really hard to keep the boys on the screen, and you only only have one hour at a time- WAIT! Zoom in. Enhance image. Run analyzer. Hack into the mainframe. Activate the shit fire Oh my god. Three boys. Is that's right, we got three boys. Triple boy. Craziest set of the boys season three, baby. Okay, here's the thing. The boy bar only has three segments, and each action costs one segment. Meaning if you spend all of the bar to get three boys, you can't send out an attack, so you'll have to rely on them as projectiles until it refills. Jacko's got three supers. Her 632146P is a Potemkin Buster. A 236236S and 236236HS are similar in the fact that they turn the boys into buff boys. 236236S is a defensive buff. The boy masks up and becomes invincible for the duration of the super. This one's kind of sick because now the boys just don't go away and they're not affected by enemy attacks. 236236HS is the lab monster's wet dream as it causes the boy bar to refill extremely quickly, meaning you can do loads of attacks in a short space of time. But how do you actually conduct yourself in a match? Well, that's easy. Just do as I do. As you see here, I place the boy down towards Nago. This is to try and keep him away as I set up more boys. So, Nago, if you would just sit there like a true gentleman, that would be really helpful. My boy! So you can't expect your boys to be safe if you put them out in the open. So I recommend getting a knockdown first. As you can see, Jacko's 2D is a really far-reaching move where you can put a boy down afterwards. Just make sure you have a block string afterwards because if you don't, you can lose the boy. God damn it. Look, guys, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. This character's hard, dude. Like, sometimes I think I'm on the right track and the boys just dip. Like, where are you going? I need help! I'm not the best person to teach you, Jacko, but that's alright. Given time and patience, anyone could learn this character and figure out the steps for themselves. Even though I haven't won a game, I think I'll play one last one. Get in, Nago. Let's get that run back. I don't think I'm gonna beat him, but that's okay. It's not all about winning or losing, sometimes it's about learning. <laughs> Fool! I baited you with my speech. It's always about winning. You go into the Shadow Realm, bitch! Ah! Yeah, Jacko's hard. Uh, see you next Saturday. <laughs>